The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's Gold Group webinar with your host, Willie Miranda. Good afternoon, Gold members, and thank you very much for coming on today's call. Um, I have a very special call for you. And I, before I even get into that, I wanted to say thank you for a few emails that I received today. Uh, I know a lot of you uh, received in the subject line, Santa Claus, and uh, you thought that was pretty, pretty clever to get you to open up the email. Uh, but it worked. Uh, we did, definitely had a, a much higher open rate than we have in the past. Um, but I wasn't um, doing it out of uh, a disrespect to Santa Claus, uh, or I wasn't doing it as a, as a lie out there. It really is. I mean, I really feel that the content of today's call, uh, really just talking about more of, um, uh, more of the vision, more of the head stuff that I don't really get into too deep usually on our calls. Uh, most of the calls that we go over are more practical stuff that I'm doing in my business on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, what works for us, I share with my coaching members. Uh, what works for my coaching members, I share with my staff. And um, it's more you know, lead generation based, more system based. Uh, but today, I feel this is the most important call you can be on probably this year uh, because I really feel that without the information I'm going to give you in this call, it's impossible to really grow a very profitable and successful business and really know where you're going. So that's really the goal out of this call is for you to be introduced really to a couple different concepts that we've been doing here at my office. And like I said, anything that I, I share here at Miranda Real Estate Group, I want to be able to take that content and package it and get it out to you. So uh, that was really the purpose of the call, really to start talking more so about what we're doing about vision and planning for 2016. Um, most of you know that uh, we're on a usually a 60 to 90 day cycle when it comes to uh, listing real estate and selling real estate. Uh, because it usually takes that long, especially if there's financing involved. And now with the trade and, and all these different regulations that are coming out, we're finding that it's going to be probably close to that 90-day mark. So uh, right now, the month of October, the things that we write today and the contracts that we, that we write today affect us in our 2016 numbers. So goal planning should start now, really fourth quarter, uh, so we have that 90-day ramp up uh, versus what the majority of the failing agents I feel out there uh, start getting into goal planning January and February of next year when it's already too late. So the whole goal of this call is to get you guys to a fast start and as, the, the, uh, as it says here on the screen, a strong close in 2015 will lead you to an even bigger start or stronger start in 2016. And um, you know, I just got done, uh, which is in the last three hours. Uh, a couple years ago I hired a business coach to come in and work on my real estate, my insurance and also the coaching side of the business. And um, Sean Mahoney is his name, and he's a great guy, and uh, he comes and, and meets with us on a monthly basis. And at first, when I first met with him, him and I took a whole year of just really going down and just pouring stuff out of my mind and, and making me look beyond that one-year window. Uh, for years, I've only looked at uh, the short term. I've only looked at you know, the next 12 months and how do we you know, do last year compared to this year, and that's about as far as I got. Uh, what Sean really um, made me do is to sit down and really project what my vision was moving forward. Uh, what was not only my one-year vision, but what was the three-year vision, the five-year vision, the ten-year vision, twenty-year uh, vision, and really put together an exit strategy, uh, which I thought was kind of crazy when I first talked to him. And I said, "Geez, you know, I'm coming here to you know grow my business. I'm not planning on retiring anytime soon. Uh, why are we talking about an exit strategy already?" Uh, but it was important to have the end in mind, right? And uh, you've You've seen this in the uh, Seven Habits of the Most Successful People by Stephen Covey. He talks about uh, talking about the end in mind, you know, having that first and then working your way backwards. So that's what we did. We did that for a good solid year, and uh, he involved my agents. He involved my staff. Uh, he interviewed them separately from me uh, to really d do a deep dive on what my vision was for my office and what are the things that we really trailed behind on. What were the things that, you know, we talked about, hey, someday we'll do this. Uh, but just never got around to. What are the things that we didn't implement uh, and things that we should be implementing? So that's why it's so important to have a coach, to really be able to be a sounding board for you. Uh, he has a lot of experience uh, in, in the uh, business world and also in the, um, you know, uh, with corporate America. Uh, so it was very easy to talk to him. He has a lot of great experience on that. And uh, we were able to take a lot of the information and put together and really break it down into a, you know, one, three, five, ten, and twenty with an extra strategy, but also broke it down into chunks. And the chunks that we broke it into, believe it or not, uh, and we're going to talk about that on today's call. And what the topic is is breaking it down into twelve-week chunks because he felt 
that you know when you put an annual goal together uh, and you say, okay, here's what we want to do for the year, right? We want to sell X number of homes, or we want to recruit so many agents, or you know we want to lose this much in weight. That a lot of the uh, New Year resolutions that we set forth in January, by January 15th, 95% of those are gone, and that's a true statistic. Uh, that's out there that the majority of these uh, these uh, resolutions are just gone because just people don't have it in front of them. Uh, they feel now they have the whole year to actually accomplish that goal. So why start now? We can always catch up. And the truth is that you know you're looking at yourself October 22nd and you haven't lost a pound. And, and for some of us, maybe you gain weight, uh, or maybe you know you wanted to sell 50 homes and you're down to you know 30. And you're like you know I only have a few more months left. And now that we're on a 60-90 day cycle, I'm not going to hit it. But if you broke it down into chunks, into 12-week periods, and really focused on that, uh, think about what the difference would be at the end of the year, especially if you knew what your numbers were and you jumped right on them. So it allows you time to change, tweak uh, your goals and what you're trying to do, and really assign the big rocks into your quarter so that you can um, you know, make sure that you achieve them. And the other thing is that I found myself trying to do all the goals myself. So uh, if there was a training goal, a recruiting goal, a selling goal, and all these other things that were on there, you know, I have great staff and great people that work for me, but I was taking all the responsibility onto myself and saying, you know, I was the person in charge. Which Sean made me do is actually take those things, put them down on paper, and then assign them and have other people on my team be the owners of that. They had to own that. That was their their gig. And um, not that I couldn't help out or support them on it, but at the end of the day, when we had weekly meetings and, and quarterly meetings, they were the ones that had to report on it. And that changed my business. Uh, to, I mean, I can't even imagine if we didn't do that three or four years ago. That just totally changed my business for the good. So, um, you know, we did things like financial reviews and, you know, went over all the different numbers on what we should be, you know, on a monthly basis where we needed to be and, and uh, where we were prior year and where we were going into the future. Uh, and that was just a whole huge takeaway for me. And I'm hoping that uh, some of the information that you get off this call today is that you really take it and uh, sit back and, and really understand exactly why you need to implement this in your business. And um, you know, we've had a, a lot of different things this year happen to us uh, that weren't by mistake. But you know, the, the one, and I'm going to show you some pictures of it in a little bit, is our new building. We just remodeled our new building, and some of you might have seen it on Facebook. For those of you that are friends with me on Facebook, um, but it's an amazing. Um, actually, let's see if I can actually pull up the pictures on here. I, I had pulled it up earlier. And um, I'll show you some of the pictures on there in a second. But it's just an amazing um, transformation of what we had. And I've been talking about doing a new building since 2008, 2007. And then as most of you know, we had that whole turnaround with the mortgage industry and, and everything pretty much collapsed. And we just put our brakes on it because it was going to be about a $1.2 million uh, transition and, and cost to us. So we decided not to do it. And I'm glad that we didn't because the whole real estate industry has really changed. You know, agents don't work out of the office like they used to. Most agents are, you know, in their cars, they're on their tablets, they're on their cell phones, and just the whole real estate industry has been changing uh, over the last 10 years. So we decided just to remodel our current building, and that was the best thing that we could have done for ourselves because that really made a huge difference in our bottom line, uh, but it also made us more accountable to our agents. Uh, our image is much better for them. It held our retention better, made our staff happier. Uh, and the rest is, is history, but I'm going to show you some pictures in just a second just so I can share them with you Because um, I always like doing this and I apologize if I'm jumping around on screens here, but um, Let's see if I can just pull it up here. There we go Good old Facebook um, But there's our new building and we just posted this October 16th And as you see on there, that was our old building right there and you can see it just it was an old ranch home uh, We had it for a number of years on uh, the old sign even there's a hole there in the parking lot, um, but you know we've had this now for a long time. And I was going to knock both of the. I have another building for insurance next to it. You can't see it in this photo, but the whole goal was to knock down both buildings and, and build a big building. But sitting down and doing the planning, and here's the point I'm trying to make here: if I didn't sit down and actually do the planning with Sean and actually say, "Well, what's stopping you from doing this? Let's get this going. Let's break it down into 12-week chunks." What do you have to do first to make this happen? I said, well, you know, I got to find an engineer, I have to find a builder, I have to, you know, get the plans approved and all those stuff. So we wrote all those th different things down, and we set up a 12-week plan to get it done. Once we had the conceptual done, then we set up another 12 weeks to actually get, you know, the process of the new construction going. And there's just some pictures of it 
uh, of, of before and after. And there's my uh, builder there, Anthony, uh, did a great job on having the vision of what that pro product should look like. And they pretty much gutted it right down to nothing, uh, right down to the shell. And there's the back of the building where we put our addition on. And there's uh, the after product right there. The, you can see the sign now. There's our new sign. There's our building all trans, uh, transformed. And in the back, you can't see it, but there's a, a 20 by 20 addition uh, in the back where we have some more offices. And uh, there's my brother Brian and myself at our grand opening just uh, last week that we had. And we, we've hit a lot of different milestones. There's my wife Sherry, and, and she was there and did a lot of the stuff for the grand opening and helped us uh, get that going. But there's our front lobby, walking into the front lobby. That's what they see walking in the front door. Our conference room was very important, and that was one of the things I did with my agents. I sat them down, and, and we polled them as to what was important to them. And it wasn't a private office or, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, that they had to have their name in lights. They really wanted a professional workspace, somewhere where they can bring their clients uh, and feel that um, it was very, you know, professional looking and, and somewhere that was very conducive to the type of work that they wanted to do. So they can come in here and pull up their, their uh their, their listings and do you know, cost market analysis there. We get a lot of sellers that come in when we need to get price reductions or even before we list the properties coming in. We hold our meetings in there and where I was in a meeting just a few minutes ago for the last three hours. Uh, but it's turned out to be a, a very great project and it's because of this planning and this vision that I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, and to watch it come all together uh, is very emotional to myself because I probably should have did this a lot, long time ago. Um, but I just wasn't able to uh, pull the trigger on it. And there's my great staff, and uh, uh, there's Tricia. She's my newest assistant. Some of you may get emails from her in the future, so you can na match a name to a face, and you'll see her email here in a second. And uh, just a special thank you for uh, Tricia. That was the first day on the job, uh, or actually the first week on the job when she came. We gave her flowers, had a luncheon for her, and, and some balloons there. Uh, but Trisha put a lot of the content of this webinar together for you as well and has some great stuff for you at the end of this video or at, at the end of this webinar that I'm going to be sending out to you. So probably as a housekeeping, I should say that anything that you see here on this webinar today, you're going to get copies of. Okay, So you're going to get copies of this webinar, but I'll also give you all the material in the slides so you don't have to rush around and, and uh, you know write down all the notes on there. And there's uh, the leader in chief. And uh, this was a great present. Uh, you know, I got a lot of presents, a lot of notes, and you know, I appreciate all the all the comments and notes that I received. But this was something that was a, really a shocker. This is actually one of the bricks uh, from the fireplace that was taken off, uh, taken down in that branch house. And they quoted my favorite quote here: "The road to success uh, is always under construction." So that was a great uh, a great surprise and a great piece there. So I, I wanted to show that to you, and the reason why I wanted to share this with you is because again, this was a huge vision that I had years ago and it wasn't really until the last couple of years when I sat down with my business coach that this all came alive and this is why I'm bringing this to your attention because we all need to do this and if you get anything from today's call uh, is really setting this up and making sure that you're setting up your own vision. All right so I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump into some of the rest of the content on here and uh, what I wanted to point out is that I really need you guys to pay attention to this call and, and, and this is a slide to my daughter, uh, she's 16, she got a, she, or 15, she just got a, a, a kick out of it when I showed her the other day. But I, I describe this to being her because every time we're out there, or we're walking in the mall, or you know, we're driving in the car, she's got her face to the cell phone, and it's such a huge distraction. And I know there's a lot of studies and and things that are coming out that it's going to be a huge problem down the road. But if you could just take the next uh, 45 minutes or so to just sh shut off your phone, don't text. Uh, shut off that email, you know, shut off that dinging uh, noise that the email makes every time an email comes in. Just really focus on this because this could be the most important webinar that you're on all year just by taking a couple of different concepts here and applying them to your business and not only your business but also your personal life as well. And it's very important that uh, that you do this and, and we move forward on this. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out, just kind of backstepping a little bit, uh, and this was a huge takeaway for me, working with my agents and working with uh, Shaw Mahoney, we actually came up with a vision. And our vision was to help the best agents in our region build a business while making it hassle-free to our clients. And that was really the vision that uh, we set forth as a, as a team, as a group. Uh, it's, it's written in our conference room so that people can see that. We're actually going to have a painting of it uh, in the agent's room. Uh, but this is something that um, uh, really hits home, and it's a, just a, a one 
liner that just shows everyone whether you're an agent, staff, um, you know, management, to help the best agents in our region build a business while making it hassle-free to our clients. So you may see that come up in, in the near future on here. All right, so everyone's cell phones are off, emails are off, and we're going to go ahead and move forward. And before I do so, I just wanted to, uh, again, let everyone know that uh, within, at the end of this uh, uh, webinar, I'm going to have uh, questions to answer. Anyone that has any questions, please do so. Type your questions right now or as we go along in the question box, and I'll make sure to answer them. And if we don't get to everyone at the end, I will make sure within, uh, within 24 hours that I will get your uh, questions answered so that you don't have to uh, worry about um, you know, me not getting to you on this call. Um, this is another big accomplishment. This is something that, um, that uh, Sean and I put together, and, and he said, you know, what, what are you looking at down the road? What do you want to do? What's your passion? And I said, well, my passion is, you know, really developing uh, my agents. And my story goes, I mean, basically this book, book was written, and, and I just wanted to give you some concepts of what this, uh, this book's about. But I, I wrote this book to help agents and other coaching members so that they can build their own business and build a better business by repeat and referral business. Um, and it has all of my wins, my losses, a lot of my challenges and successes that I've had throughout the years. But I wanted to, you know, put this out there for everyone to really take advantage uh, of making the same mistakes that I did. And that's why I titled it, How to Not Get Your Ass Kicked in a Real Estate Business. Uh, and it's a controversial uh, title, I'm sure, and, uh, but a very enlightening book from those that have read it. And they just, um, it's just really easy read. Uh, it's not hard uh, of a read. It's very conceptual, uh, things that you can apply in your business right away. And we're going to be having this uh, book launch with Amazon on December 3rd, 2015. So the reason why I'm putting it out there is because I'm going to give you guys, and you're going to get stuff from me um, over the next few weeks on this launch and, and information on how you can get a copy of it. But I guess the the win-win here is that obviously – I want everyone to wait to buy the book until December 3rd. So don't go online and, and, and purchase it now. Wait till December 3rd because if you buy it December 3rd, I'm going to go ahead and give you, uh, I think it came out to about $792 worth of different bonuses, uh, a lot of templates and a lot of forms that I use in my office, uh, webinars and uh, information on my buyer presentation, different things that we use in our, in our, um, in our company, I'm going to be able to share with you as a bonus. And I want to make sure that you guys make sure that December 3rd is the date that you actually purchase this. So you'll be getting some information on it, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to, um, uh, to change your life and, and to have you take some of the concepts in the book and apply it to your business. But, you know, this book was written by a real estate agent that actually does what he teaches. And there's a lot of trainers and coaches out there that uh, I've seen over the years that haven't sold in, uh, real estate for 20, 30 years. Some of them have never sold a house uh, before in their lives. Um, but... I'm actually in the trenches every day, every day, just like you are. You know, I was on a listing appointment uh, two nights ago. I was, um, you know, sitting down doing a price reduction uh, earlier this morning. You know, I'm in the trenches with you guys every day, so I understand what you guys go through on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I feel that pain that you, that you go through with that bad inspection. Um, you know, with that buyer remorse, uh, and those are just uncontrolled situations that we're going to have in any business, whether you're a doctor, whether you're here, it doesn't matter. We're all feel some pain. It's losing this thing to their agent or, um, you know, having, driving down and seeing a sign go up. Uh, these are things that I face just like you guys face. Uh, but fortunately, I've been able to take a lot of what I've learned in the insurance business over the years. Uh, the repeat and referral business process, you know, the insurance business is built by uh, that renewal, or that, that, um, that uh, revenue, revenue from the repeat and referral business that they do, but also that recurring revenue, right, that uh, the residual income uh, on the insurance side. So I was able to take a lot of that information, apply it to my real estate business, and that's what really set me to go to the next level with this. And uh, Craig and I put together a product that on December 3rd, when we do this launch, you're going to be getting information on called the Referral Agent Machine. Uh, and it's a great product and something that's going to be available to, to coaching members and also other members at a discounted price. But again, it's going to be attached with that launch, so make sure that you wait till December 3rd to get that, and you're going to really enjoy it. And, and, and like, I mean, if you like the book, you're going to love the product. Um, and I, I feel that it's going to definitely take your business to the next level. But the other thing, too, that we just hit, and I, don't, I didn't mention this uh, earlier, is that this week we just hit another huge milestone at Miranda Real Estate Group. We just surpassed a billion dollars in real estate sales. 
Uh, that's 57 home sales um, that we've had since uh, opening Miranda Real Estate Group back in 2002. And the best part of that, though, is that 68% uh, was from repeat and referral business. And that's a huge number. And let's face it, that's the number that I enjoy the best because, um, you know, I, I tell all the agents, I mean, if you want to have, you know, more fun and, and um, make more money and give more back, it's so important that you're dealing with people that you know, like, and trust, but also that they know, like, and trust you. It just makes it a lot easier going into that listing appointment and they're not interviewing any other agents. They're not hassling you over your commission. Um, you know, it's nice to be able to, um, you know, to, to have people call you because you did a great job for them. Now they're referring you to three and four uh, people that you can go and sell uh, their homes for or help them purchase a home for. And it all comes because of the repeat and referral business. So, um, again, Amazon bestseller list, December 3rd. Check it out. It's going to be awesome. And like I said, there's going to be a lot of bonuses that are going to be attached to it and uh, some extra product stuff. So that is it on that. And one last piece on here. Uh, last month, uh, a couple weeks ago, I did a webinar on time management. And actually, it was probably about a month ago now that I think about it. Uh, I had a lot of great emails that came, a lot of great feedback. A lot of you have already applied a lot of the systems and, and um, you know, from developing your perfect week. Uh, managing your email better, blocking that time effectively. And um, this is something that I feel that every agent that's out there that wants to be a top producer, uh, you need to watch this webinar. And you can get to it by going to topproducingagentsecrets.com, topproducingagentsecrets.com. And that will get you right on to an instant replay. You don't have to log on to anything. Uh, it just brings you right to the actual replay. Uh, so make sure that you write down that, that, that uh, URL and, and get on to that webinar. And it's funny because I've had so much great feedback from this webinar, and then there's other agents that really struggle with this. And I'm going to show you something that I did on a, a mastermind uh, here at my office. And, uh, and the majority of the people that were at that mastermind did talk about focus and, and uh, time management, and, and uh, that's their biggest challenge in the business. And here's a great product right here, a tool, a webinar that they can go on to give them a lot of great answers to their problems, and they didn't even go on it. They didn't even take the hour to watch this webinar. And when I asked them why, and they just said, I didn't have time to do it. So that's the exact reason why you need to watch this, to get more time uh, in your business so that you can spend more time with your family uh, and be able to do the things that I talked about before, have more fun, you know, do more stuff on a personal basis, make more money, uh, and then give back, you know, and give back to the community. So, um, so time management webinar, make sure you check that out, topproducingagentsecrets.com. Here's the mastermind that we did a few weeks back, and this is on um, October 6th. Sat down and, and we had a mastermind breakfast with my with my uh, some of my agents, and we just went around the room for those that came and and talked about you know what their biggest struggles were, what their biggest challenges were, and if you see on here, a lot of it had to do with time management and focus, like I just mentioned, and uh, goal setting uh, was some of those that came up. They just weren't focused on what they wanted to do. They got up every morning. If they didn't have an appointment, they just you know laid around in their pajamas until uh, 11 o'clock or so, or 12 o'clock, and then said, you know, let me go take a ride to the office and see what's going on there. And, you know, maybe they had a 4 o'clock appointment or a listing later on. But point being is that they didn't have any structure, right? They didn't have any structure. They didn't know what they needed to do. And being in that um, environment, uh, this, this is where agents fail. So that webinar, I talk about how to develop your perfect week and how to really structure so that you're getting the right number of hours in for lead generation, uh, your appointments, and also blocking out time for, for yourself and also your family. Uh, but then there were some other ones on here as far as uh, with their listings and you know uh, listings that sit on the market. We determined that that was more of a price issue. Uh, but our market's pretty stable, so if, if properties are not priced properly, uh, they're not going to sell. So you know we talked about that and how to get more buyers into the households. And, and um, there was a great conversation, and we actually have another follow-up to it on November 10th. Um, but this is stuff that um, you know I, I wanted to share with you because I wanted to show you that, that more so on that time management webinar that a lot of these issues right here will be uh, answered for you. And if you follow the, the topics that, and, and the, the strategies that I give you in that time management webinar, uh, you'll be able to do the same thing. Uh, this is my daily to-do checklist that I have. That's a great checklist. I use it every day, writing down my top priorities for today, personal to-dos. Uh, and also all the different things that I have to make phone calls on so I don't forget certain things throughout the day, but also allows me to have more of a paper a version, and I can kind of map out my whole day from 5.30 in the morning to 10 o'clock at night 
of all the different things I need to do. How do I need to block out time? We're going to be talking about that now and in, in, in what I'm going to introduce to you in a second as to why this is a key, um, a key tool for you. Now, some of you may use you know, your iPhones and, and that's okay or your calendars on, on Gmail or whatever you may do on Outlook, uh, but this is just something to keep you more focused on that, that, that one day, right, in that top you know, five, six, ten priorities that you're going to have uh, for that day. And Chet Holmes talks about it in um, uh, The Ultimate Sales Machine, and he talks about not having more than six uh, of your top priorities per day uh, because you need to spend time on those and you, you want to make sure that you accomplish those and complete those tasks. Um, and usually anywhere between five or six is the maximum you can do in a day. But if you have a couple small ones that just maybe it's a phone call or maybe it's a, you know, a quick view of something that you need to get back to someone on or whatever, um, that's why I have 10 on there. But uh, you will get, uh, when you, when, at the end of this webinar, I'm going to show you how you can get this template on a Word document so you can go ahead and just download it and use it for yourself. Uh, and then I talked about already about the, uh, the building. I actually went on to the, to, to the uh, Facebook page to show the inside photos. Uh, but this is the before and after shots here, and it's a huge accomplishment for us. But again, it all started uh, with a vision, and it's something that, uh, like I said, I wish I did years ago. Um, but I think that you're going to see, moving into uh, what I'm going to talk about here, uh, we've had some huge milestones this year with our book coming out and being released. That was something that I wanted to do for four or five years. I knocked that down into small uh, chunks and, and actually spent a lot of time. I mean, I spent a lot of time and hours um, getting that together. But I, I did it over uh, a 12-week period to start, and then I, I did another 12 weeks to finish it. But the point is it got done. And this has been on my mind now. Uh, since 2009 that I wanted to come out with this book and after reading uh, this book that I'm going to show you and share with you in a second uh, it got me to organize my notes and or it got me to organize my focus and I was able to put it in a format that was able to bring it from the beginning to the end and actually accomplish it and that was a big milestone for us this year so I'm going to share that with you now um, and talk to you a little bit about the 12-week year and that's what this uh, this next uh, part of this webinar is going to be talking about some of you may have uh, seen the book out there. It's a, it's a book that has been around uh, for a little bit of time, and I've shared it with some of my top agents and had them apply it just to see what they thought because it, it did you know, wonders for me and my business and getting me focused on a lot of the different goals that I was working on with my business coach. Um, but I wanted to make sure that um, you know, I, anything that I use at work, I share it with my agents and I share it with my, with my coaching members. So the 12-week year, this is by... Uh, um, Brian Moran, he's the main guy on here, and then Michael uh, Lennington. But these guys are, um, you know, they really put it down and really get you to think about how to focus uh, and what you're trying to accomplish. And it allows you to set goals every 12 weeks and have a fresh outlook on what you're trying to achieve during that time. And that's very important. And it prioritizes your goal for maximized results, right? So I gave you a, a, a different examples of what I did, but. Um, you can only have so many goals that you could work on. And the problem is that, and especially a lot of us, you know, when we go to these, you know, different seminars or go to conferences and stuff like that. I mean, I remember going to Craig, Proc uh, Craig Proctor conferences years ago. I'd come back with 20 different things. Like my my staff would dread when I would come back. They're like, oh my god, here he comes. All right, all right. Now Willie wants to have a meeting. He just got back from conference. Look out! And I would just shoot all kinds of stuff at them. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this postcard. I want to do this website. And the truth be told, a lot of it didn't get done because it was just too much. It was just overwhelming uh, for my staff, and it was overwhelming uh, for me, and I just never got to it. Um, or never got to it where I was able to complete it. So then what I started doing is just chunking them down. And instead of trying to do you know, 15 different things, what was my top two or three things that I wanted to get done that was the most priority that I felt would have the most impact, uh, that I could be the most productive on, uh, that's going to have the most impact not only on my business life but also my personal life. So I was able to do that and really focus on that. And when you think about it, if you try to make these, and I mentioned this before about having annual goals, uh, when you try and plan out goals that are spread out over a year, uh, it's less predictable. It's almost impossible to try and define your weekly action goals because you know, you're looking 11 or 12 months down into the future. When you break it down into you know, 12 weeks instead of 12 months, it makes a huge difference. It just totally changes your focus. Um, and, and the goal of 12 weeks seems a lot better, a lot closer to do, so that you can only choose two or three things that you're going to accomplish over those 12 weeks. Um, 
So, and, and by doing that, by only going after those two or three things, you're going to be able to pursue those goals with a lot of intensity, uh, and you should be able, be able to have that greatest impact uh, for both your personal life and your professional life as well. So, again, taking your business to the next level is what this is all about. Um, he also talked about long-term vision, right? And I gave you an example of my own story earlier on this webinar. Uh, and on the bottom there, you'll see, to help the best agents in our region build a business while making it hassle-free hassle to our clients. And that's my quote, um, and that's the quote that was built for myself and also my agents. Um, but, you know, you, you need to have a starting point, and your vision is your starting point. So, you know, you want to maybe if you're taking notes down and, and writing things down, I mean, all of this stuff is going to be in the workbook and, and some sheets that I'm going to give you off this book. Um, but, again, you got to start off with a vision because if you don't have that, you don't really know where you're going. Uh, you want to choose a personal vision first and then align that up with your business vision. Uh, that's going to be very important um, and because, you know, like my big why. My big why was always to provide to my family, to, buy, to provide for my kids. Uh, I have a 15-year-old, an 18-year-old. One just started at Bentley University in Boston. Um, and, you know, both great kids. Uh, they worked hard through school, have good grades. And my big why was giving them the things that I didn't have growing up as a kid. Uh, and one being a college education, I'm, I ended up doing that and having to pay for it myself, and I got a four-year degree. Uh, but my parents never put money aside for college, and you know, they just didn't think that far ahead. No one in my family had ever went to college. So by being able to, um, you know, pay for it myself and, and, and be focused on it to go through it, I mean, it took me five years to get a four-year degree, um, but that was on my own. That was me getting an RA job. That was me saving money. That was me working every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night uh, and while my friends were out drinking and partying in college. Uh, Willie was working, you know, and I was out there working, bartending, getting tips and, and uh, making money, not spending money. But the point with that is that my big why was giving back to my family, giving them things that I didn't have as a kid. And that's no disrespect to my parents. They were hardworking people, learned a lot, of, a lot of great stuff from my parents. But this is what drives me. This is what I have on a personal level that drives me because I know that my business is going to serve my life. So if that makes sense to you, um, uh, you know, I, I think that you'll know and, and see that the vision is the starting point, but really developing that big why. And that's what created the passion for me and that emotional connection to my vision because by having um, you know, that tied in, it just, just increases my aspirations uh, for really growing my business and growing my, both my businesses, both the coaching, the real estate, uh, but also the insurance, so all three of my businesses. So the more specific and compelling it is, the more likely you're going to be achieving that goal. All right, so that's uh, the long-term vision piece of that. Um, but developing your vision, you know, he talks about, you know, aligning it with not only, you know, your next 12 weeks, but also one year, five year, 10 year, 15 year goals into the future and really taking a look at what your vision is going to look like. You know, what's it going to look like um, 20 years from now when you go to retire or, you know, how much income do you want to have? Or, you know, do you want to have uh, put money aside for your kid's college? How much money do you want to have for retirement? Uh, what trips and vacations do you want to go on? And how, do you, how are you going to celebrate uh, your successes? And uh, these are all things that you want to develop and think about. But what's the most important to you physically, spiritually, mentally, uh, relationally, financially, professionally, and personally? And these are the big hot spots. And we've talked about this a lot, and I'm going to show you um, something that Craig has also done with the one-hour business plan. And a lot of these points are in there that Craig talks about, and it's just picking two or three different things in each of those categories that you want to accomplish. And maybe it's, uh, you know, over the next 12 weeks, maybe the most important thing uh, for you is physically. Maybe it's getting in better shape so that you can have the energy to, you know, work harder and, and work in the right things and, and work business smart, not harder. And um, that will then, in turn, um, make all the other um topics here, the spiritual, the mentally, the relationship, make those a lot better for you by having that one thing. Like, what's the one thing that's most important to you that will spill over into all these other categories? You know, how much freedom, how much freedom do you want? How much free time do you want for yourself? And then again, what, what type of income do you need to support your family? So it all ties back into your whole personal, your personal family and your personal life, and, and that's what's going to really drive you. So if your goal is, is not measurable, and here's another thing. I'm going to show you some examples of, of what we're doing in our office and how you could tie this into real estate. But if you don't have something that you're measuring, then how are you going to know where you're going, right? There's no way to track it. 
Uh, it makes you less accountable for your weekly actions because there's just no one watching the numbers, uh, which means that you're less likely to achieve your 12-week goal. Um, you know, one of the examples that they bring up in the book, he talks about weight loss goals and measuring your daily calories and, and your water intake. And, um, and I share a story with some of my coaching members. You know, I went away um, over the, to, to, uh, on vacation. We would go away every year and, you know, we always try to do good and, and, and not go overboard, go on a vacation because you want to feel good and look good. And, you know, this past year, just being bit busy with the building and everything that was going on, we went away and, and, um, and then went to vacation and we had a great time and, you know, we ate ice cream every night and, you know, went on the boardwalk and did all these different things. And as soon as I came back from that, I went to a, a real estate seminar out in San Diego and then uh, we had a, a super conference two weeks later. Um, the long and short of it, uh, I came back from the conference uh, in, in Anaheim and I had put on a lot of weight and I was like, where, where did this come from? You know, and when I looked back and, and said to myself, you know, if you were journaling everything you put in your mouth, that's where it all came from. So I made a, a commitment and I, and I really focused on a 30 day, you know, just, you know, I'm just going to start eating better. I'm going to start, you know, using my Lose It app on my phone. I'm going to make sure I get a gallon of water in me a day. Uh, I'm not going to eat after a certain time at night. I'm going to stay away from the, you know, the white breads and the sweets. And uh, within a short period of time, actually about 21 days or so, I had dropped 14 pounds um, by really focusing on that. But the reason why I did that is because it was measurable. I was able to measure the calories that I was taking every day, uh, the water intake, you know, just like I mentioned before, and also exercising four times a week. So um, this is why this is so important. You need to set a specific and measurable 12-week goal that aligns with your long-term vision. Uh, and the best 12-week goals are realistic but still challenge you to deliver your best work. So you don't want to have something that's, you know, too easy. Like, you know, I want to lose two pounds in the next 12 weeks. I mean, it's got to be something that you're going to work hard towards and it's got to be realistic. Uh, but also, I guess the other side of it, I guess uh, what they're trying to point out here is that I've heard some people say, you know, next 30 days I want to lose 50 pounds. Well, that's just not realistic. And you're going to end up within a week or two being very discouraged by it and quitting it altogether. So from a real estate perspective, I've always coached and trained uh, my agents and also my coaching members to, to do the daily activities, right? In the five, five, and five, you guys have heard this before, it, those daily activities, this could be measured in the real estate business. And what I mean by that is that uh, in, the, um, in the actual time management webinar, I talk about the importance of having a perfect week, but also having that 80-20 factor kick in so that 20% uh, of your time is on pro activities, and by doing that 20%, you're going to pick up 80% of your sales results. And the one way to do that is by following this 5, 5, and 5, where it's five calls a day, five notes a day, five emails a day. And if you think about it, everyone says, yeah, I can do that, I can do that. Um, and then by day three, day four, I notice sometimes, ah, oh, geez, I didn't call, make my calls today, or I didn't get the notes, I'm going to double up tomorrow. Um, you know, all these excuses start coming out. And the reality is, if you stick to this plan, think about the compound effect of this. Five calls a day, five days a week, that's 25 calls a week. That's 100 calls a month. I have a, a very successful agent that works for me. Uh, her name is Jackie Fontaine, and, and she does a great job with this, and she shares this with a lot of the agents. She's been in the business now over 30 years. And still today, when you ask her, you know, how are you always uh, on the top of the list, and, you know, you, you do very well, and you're always, you know, doing well over you know, seven, eight million dollars in business. How are you doing this? And this is what she says. She goes, listen, every day, two hours a day, I don't leave my house until I have my five calls done. And five calls a day is 25 a week, is 100 a month. And she says, you know what? I'm just lucky. She says, because when I make those calls and 100 people, someone out of those 100 people either know someone that's buying or is buying or selling a home. And this is where she gets you know, consistently selling, you know, two, three, four homes a month by following this, um, uh, you know, this activity log here of doing the five, five, and five. So I uh, just wanted to point that out to you, and that's a great example of what they talk about in this 12-week uh, year is by actually having stuff that you can measure. Now, let me share with you, uh, taking the 12-week year, we had some issues going on. I say issues, but we just had some, um, um, some challenges on the insurance business where we had some of our, uh, the sales reps they just weren't, they didn't really know their numbers. You know, how many quotes you did this week? Oh, I did this. Or how many calls did you make? Oh, I think I did that. So I explained to them the, the whole concept of the, uh, the point system and that they have to have a point system 
uh, in the insurance business, and if they can hit these number of points, uh, pretty much sales is a numbers game. You got to know what your numbers are, and you got to be striving every day to hit your numbers. And if you don't get them during the week, then you need to come in on Saturday to make up for those numbers. But just to explain to you what we have here, this is Cindy's boards, and this is three works, uh, three weeks of her boards. And if you notice, we have this daily point log here, and every day, you know, her goal is to get 40, 40 or so points. Uh, throughout the, I'm sorry, I'm, I think it's closer to 30 points is where she should be. But if you can notice, I mean, one day is 45, one day is 21. This day she wasn't there. That was a, I don't know, oops day, or maybe she forgot her numbers that day. But the point being is that she had a lot of great points that week. She had 112 points. Out of those 112 points, she had sold nine items, which was her highest week in that three-week period. If you come to the next week, she only had 97 points, so a little less. But if you notice, her sales were a little less. And then even on this week here, she only had 66 points, and that was her lowest week. So by doing this and by keeping track of her dials, her contacts, the number of quotes that she mails out, the number of financial appointments she sets, uh, she can predict what her items sold are and what her daily points are uh, by going from this. So this has been uh, a game changer for her, and she's so focused on this. When I'm in there, she's like, you know, looking at her board and making sure that she's hitting her numbers. And uh, we're, you know, again, this is a work in progress, but think about it from a real estate side. You could put your five calls, your five notes, your five uh, emails or texts, uh, maybe it's five texts that you add to that, that you want to do on a daily basis. You want to make sure that you hit those goals and have your goals at the end of the week so that you have those daily points in there. And uh, it's a great way for you to uh, be able to accomplish and hit your goals uh, more effectively. And... Um, you know, sharing your 12-week goals with your business partner, family member, uh, or someone that's close to you is very important because when you share your 12-week goals with someone, uh, you want to make sure you specify why this goal is important to you, right? Share, share the big why to them, like I have my why. Uh, share why you're doing it. And the reason why you want to do that is because, or the reason why you want to share it with someone else uh, is because now you're accountable, right? Like you're making yourself accountable and you own it now, and you want to make sure that you know if you're going to share it with someone that you have respect for, uh, and that you know it's going to uh, someone's going to ask you about, hey, how's that weight loss going, or how's that you know that five fiving five going for you? Uh, you want to make sure that next time you see that person that you're following through. If not, you look like a big loser, right? And we don't want to be losers. One of the things that we don't want to be. But studies have shown that when you're accountable, uh, that you're much more likely to act on it. And that is so true because every week in our, in our office, we have a daily huddle. And that's about a 10 or 15 minute window where everyone stands in a circle and they report their numbers, they go over their week, uh, their challenges, they go over um, any stucks that they have going on for that day, uh, they report their numbers real quick and what their goal was for the day, and then we're done. And then, but once a week, we have a, a meeting where we bring everyone in together and that lasts about an hour, an hour and a half. And this is where we bring up these boards and we show the numbers and no one wants to come in there uh, looking weak because then they're not pulling their weight on the team. And um, it's very important that we take these uh, these boards and we actually sit down and we go through the numbers for everyone. And not only uh, the salespeople, but also my staff, you know, how many car changes they did and how many uh, cross sales did they do and, and how many times did they ask for uh, a life insurance appointment. They have to keep track of that now and we're looking for certain numbers from them as well. And they're all tracking. And it's just been a huge game changer for us. And again, a lot of it started by just taking some of the concepts that I learned with Sean, applying a lot of the concept, concepts that I learned from this book, and applying them into the business. And it's just made a huge difference for us. And But at the end of the day, I, I just want to repeat this because I think it's very important, and they pointed out in the book, is that you can't have others keep you accountable. You know, And I think I kind of mentioned that before. Like it, you have to, You're the only one that can keep yourself accountable. You know, if you go to a trainer and you work out and you have a great workout for an hour and you sit there and they put the meal plan together and everything gets done, but then you walk out that door and you're eating a Kit Kat on the way home from the gym, um, you know, your, your trainer is not going to be walking around with you and uh, following you all day long. The same thing if you join a, a gym membership and you go and you get all excited and they show you everything around the gym and you're like, all right, I'm going to come in here four or five days a week, and then all of a sudden you start blowing it off and you don't go. Um, you know, they're going to still collect your gym membership, you know, and they're not going to do your push-ups for you. You have to go there and actually work out and do the uh, and, and use the equipment that's there. Uh, same thing with this. Same thing with this concept. Like you can go ahead and set this vision, set these goals up, share them with someone else. But at the end of the day, you are responsible for you. 
and uh, that's very important. That's a huge takeaway uh, on this. Uh, so power hint number two, one of the, the um, and they give you these hints at the end of each chapter on different things that you want to focus on. Um, but each morning, pull out your vision and 12-week goals. That's one of the things that I heard about the, the um, you know, when you would you put your New Year, New, New Year uh, resolutions out there, that people write them down on a napkin or sometimes you just say them out loud, but they're not looking at them on a daily basis. And that's why within the first 15 days, 95% of them are out the door. Uh, you got to keep asking yourself, you know, why? Why is a 12-week goal so important to me? Uh, and if you hit it, how are you going to celebrate it? Are you going to go out and get that massage? Or are you going to go out and, uh, you know, maybe it's going out for a nice dinner. Maybe it's, you know, taking a long weekend with your spouse or a uh, significant other. Whatever that may be, you need to have some type of reward and celebrate when you do hit those milestones and, and accomplish those things. Uh, you need to look them over make sure that they connect um, of what you're trying to, you know, trying to reach and make sure that, you know, you're starting to train your brain on a daily basis that you're going to act on the things that you have in your vision uh, so that you can give that power to, the, to your why. And uh, that's what's going to take to keep focus. So um, great stuff there. And it's, uh, like I said, it's a great first, first chapter. And I'm going to show you how you can um, get some information here in a second. Uh, and they actually break it down for you in some different modules. When you buy the book, you can log on and they'll put you on like a three or four um, week email series of different ways to actually to uh, fill out some worksheets to help you with this. And I'm going to share that with you at the end. Um, but basically the 12-week plan uh, really starts you off by, um, by you know, working out each day and, and making sure that each and every day that you're accountable to doing something towards that goal. And they really point out that you only want to choose usually two or three goals that you can really do at a 12-week clip. And then writing down the, week, we, uh, the weekly action, right? The first action on here, and I'll show you an example on the worksheet, but could be just joining a gym, right? Do on a certain date, maybe by Friday of this week. The next one's on there, you know, scheduling time with your trainer. And maybe you do that every week, twice a week. Um, you know, just writing it on there as far as dieting maybe or, you know, recording your calories in a, in a some type of app or writing them down on paper, making sure you're drinking your water. All these different things need to be added in here. And that's why you need to be looking at this on a daily basis. You need to write out, you know, what those elements are. Uh, and you're going to have three different goals. So you have to make sure that, um, you know, you're, you're using – these uh, tactics or these elements towards what you're trying to reach on a, on a weekly basis. And if I look here on the next one here, again, doing the same thing for goal number two and three, you're just writing those down and putting due dates on for them. And this is what you're carrying around with you. This is what you're sharing uh, with someone that, like I said, you have um, someone that you maybe have as a mentor or someone that you want to share them with that you know that uh, is going to ask you about and really cares about your well-being and, and you hitting your goals. All right. Um, the 12-week plan completed. I mean, this is just, once you get this done, I mean, um, and, and you complete this 12-week plan, uh, you want to make sure that you, you really break it down. But you got to ask yourself these questions because once you, you know, you map it all out, you got the plan, you're ready to go. But, you know, what, what do you think you're going to struggle with? Like, you know, what's going to cause you to um, struggle to not take those actions, right? And I'm just trying to, you know, think about it in my mind right now, comparing it to, like, um, let's say making phone calls, right? Making those five calls a day. You know what? I'm going to come in every day and I'm going to make those five calls a day between 9 and 12. But then all of a sudden, uh, something comes up where, not, well, you know what? On Wednesdays, we have our office meeting. And on Fridays, you know, we do this. So I can't make my calls between 9 and 12 or 9 and 11 because, you know, I have these meetings. So this is not going to work for me, right? So you have to figure those, what those struggles are going to be and those challenges are going to be and work around those issues. Uh, and there's no way that you're going to be able to to fulfill your goal and get to your goal if you don't get these out of the way first. So, uh, for instance, I, I talk about it on the webinar, on the time management webinar, that if you have something scheduled that's in the morning, no problem, then just switch those calls to the afternoon. Um, or maybe make them on a weekend, right? Um, but th the best part about this is that, you know, and I always tell people, if you did it four out of five days, you know, you did it 80%, 85% of the time, then that's a home run. You know, you still, you, you still did great that week. Um, but if you missed every day of the week, then obviously uh, you didn't do, you know, you lost that week. So you want to make sure that you're focusing on those activities. And nothing's perfect. You know, I tell people that all the time. But if you're 85%, you know, 80% of the time you're getting it right, um, you're going to be able to, to, to hit that plan in the 12 weeks. Um, and then over here, what will you do to overcome those struggles? And, I, you know, I just mentioned that on how to do that. And it actually gives you some different tips in the book 
uh, on how to stay more focused and productive in your business uh, and how you can spend more time with your family and, 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 and just really talks about how to get around those challenges. Uh, part two on this, and I'll just go over this briefly, and again, this whole webinar was just to really conceptually give you some ideas on what you can do in your business and how you can set up your personal and, and um, your, your business goals. Um, but, you know, no way am I going to justify in a 45-minute hour webinar uh, as to all the content that's in that book. Uh, but on here, it talks about, you know, your weekly routine and a three-step process uh, in order to, to reach your goals every day. And it's scoring your week, planning your week, but participating in the WAM, which is that weekly accountability meeting. So going back to what I talked about, and let's say you're a single agent or you have a team or a broker, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can do this at any level. Um, but you need to have some type of a score to know if you had a good week or a bad week. Uh, and then you need to plan your week. You know, I mentioned in that time management webinar, every Sunday night, I sit down with my wife and we go over our family schedule for the next two or three weeks. And she puts stuff into my schedule and we actually sync uh, on Outlook right on our iPhone so that she could see my schedule, I could see her schedule, and she puts it all in there so that we make sure that, you know, I'm at kids' sporting events. I'm, you know, picking my kids up to go to doctor's appointments. I'm, you know, spending time and being home for dinner when I need to be. Uh, all those different things are very important to plan your week and to plan your month, really, moving forward. Um, but participating in a weekly accountability meeting is huge. And I mentioned to you, every Friday we get together on the insurance from 8 to about 9.30, and we go over all the numbers. And it's all accountability. And what we said we were going to do and what we were going to accomplish is very important. Now, if you don't have a staff or you don't have a team that you're working with, then pick another agent. You know, I have a lot of agents that get on what we call like a buddy system, and you give me my goals, I give you your goals, you know, you give me your goals, and, and every Friday at 8 o'clock, we'll pick up the phone and have a, you know, half-hour conversation. I do that now with a very good friend of mine, Don McCurdy and, and Andy Savalakis, um, two agents that I have a lot of respect for, and every month we actually have an accountability call that only lasts a half hour. But we each get, you know, a little bit of a um, kind of an update in the first few minutes, and then we each get about six or seven minutes that we go over, here's what I said I was going to do last month, here's what I accomplished, and here's what I'm doing next month. And we do that once a month, and it's been, uh, it's been great doing that because um, it's held us accountable. And the other thing is that I know that if I have a call coming up next week with Andy and Don, and I didn't get to a lot of my tasks, I'm rushing around to get them done. I'm working extra on Saturdays and Sundays to get them out of the way because when I get on that call, I want to show them, that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm putting some energy into this group here and being accountable to you guys, and uh, it's, it's made me accountable as well, right? So um, good stuff there, and, you know, we talked about this too, and I gave you guys an example about the weight and all that and, and having lag indicators and, and lead indicators. Uh, in these numbers. And what I mean by lead indicators, as you can see, things that happen early in the, in the execution process, right? So a lead indicator might be, um, you know, counting your calories or, you know, having a gallon of water a day or going to the gym four days a week. Those are your lead indicators, right? The number of calls you make, uh, the number of, um, you know, people that you connect with and actually speak to, uh, the number of notes that you send out. These are lead indicators that you need to have but the lag indicators are going to be your end result, which in real estate, that's going to be uh, our sales. Uh, and the same with the insurance, it's going to be the number of uh, items that we have. So measuring your effectiveness of your goals uh, by, leading, you know, by having a lead and lag indicators will allow you to see the effectiveness, effectiveness of your actions uh, that you've been you know, going through throughout the week. So something that you want to keep in mind as well. And then they just kind of break it down and, again, writing down what those lead and lag indicators are going to be. And they talk a lot about that in part two of this book. Uh, and then, like I mentioned to you before, calculating the, the, the score at the end of the week um, and writing down all the different tactics that you had to do to get to that. And, you know, asking yourself at the end, what, well, what, what went well last week and what can I improve on going forward into this week? And we've, we had that happen a lot of times where I'll say to um, Cindy at the insurance, Cindy, what happened this week? You know, you only had 66 points. Well, Here's what happened. So-and-so was on vacation. This one called in sick. Uh, I was out a day and blah, 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 right? So there's, there's different things that come up. But if they c continue to keep coming up, then are they really things that um, can be prevented or are they just becoming excuses? And there's only so much uh, time that goes by that, you, you know, you can hide these excuses. At the end of the day, are you really making your calls and are you doing what you committed to in order to get the results 
that we need to be effective in, in, in your position. So uh, daily to-dos help you with that to get your, your 12-week goal, and it's very important that, um, and that you have those lead and lagging indicators uh, to, point up to, to match them up at the end of the week. All right, so those are, um, you know, just some information there. And, and, again, just as each week, you know, set aside 15 to 20 minutes. I always recommend maybe on a Sunday evening to really just go over that and to make sure that you're having those weekly account of meeting, accountability meetings with uh, someone that you respect and someone that's going to hold you, uh, hold your feet to the fire, if you would. And um, participating in those weekly meetings are very important. And this is an actual agenda. Uh, that they have in a book that we typed out or, and um, I wanted to show to you, but having an individual report um, is very important so that each member states how they're tracking against their goals and how well they executed for that week. Um, and the four areas that you want to really focus in on is, you know, your results for the 12-week year to date. So what was your goal? So if it was weight loss and you wanted to lose 15 pounds, um, you know, what is that and how are you tracking up against that goal? And are you on pace or if you are, are you are you off base? Uh, your weekly execution score is very important. The intentions for the next coming week, like if I didn't go to the gym this week or I only went twice, this week instead of doing four days, I'm going to go five and instead of, uh, you know, eating that uh, Kit Kat twice a, twice a week, maybe I'll only have it once a week. But uh, point being is that this is where you can really take a look back if you're keeping score, you can really see where you fell short and what you're going to do moving forward because that's where you can correct it. And um, what makes a lot of sense about this is that when you look at an annual goal, and let's say it was 15 pounds on an annual basis, this is why these goals fail because it's too long of a period, like I mentioned before, in between. But if you only have 12 weeks to get certain things done, you're going to be a hell of a lot more accountable. And in this book, it talks about case studies that they had uh, where they've increased production by 30 and 40 percent by focusing their employees and their sales staff on going with the 12-week uh, technique versus saying an annual goal over 12 months. So uh, very, very important and, and, and just, you know, that encouragement too is always always great because you want to get patted on the back for a good job and um, you want to keep doing that each and every, uh, every, every meeting that you have. So like I said, these WAM meetings go for about 15 or 30 minutes. Um, actually ours, you know, happen at different times. I mean, we do ours on, on Fridays for the insurance and Thursdays for the real estate. Uh, but they consist of small groups, and uh, for those of you that work on your own, I mentioned already you can do it on your own or, or work with other people, and you just want to share, you know, what the struggles were, what the accomplishments were for the week, uh, but always end your meeting. This is very important. You always want to end your meeting on a positive note, and, um, you know, obviously that brings on for a very uh, productive week moving forward. Some of the pitfalls, and this is something that, uh, you know, according to the author, uh, Brian Moran, he says that some of the pitfalls – uh, and success tips that clients tend to encounter was that, you know, it's, it's really your job to avoid the pitfalls and to use the tips in order to reach your goal and be successful. And he talks about, you know, if you're not measuring um, and if you think that it's complicated or unimportant, then that's going to be a huge, um, already mentally, you already checked out. Uh, you don't schedule a block of time each week to assess your progress, right? Taking that 15 or 30 minutes to actually look at what you did prior week and actually follow your numbers, if you're not going to do that, then, you know, you're just wasting a lot of your time. Uh, and then what happens is you end up abandoning the system uh, when you don't score well, right? So if you have to keep going to that meeting and, oh, I didn't make my calls again this week, I didn't make my calls again this week, well, how many times are you going to do that where you're going to feel like a big loser and not end up going to these meetings or not wanting to participate or worse yet, just quitting, right? And none of us want to be a quitter. So it's very important for us to be able to focus and, and keep up on, um, you know, our goals and make sure that we have those accountability meetings, good or bad, you know. And, you know, I remember working out with my trainer and, and um, you know, or some weekends that, you know, I just had some, uh, had some more uh, pasta or had some more uh, pizza that week or drank a couple more beers. And, you know, on Tuesday morning I'm going in and getting weighed and I didn't want to do it, but I had to. And, you um, you know, kept me accountable. But knowing that I had to go in there and get weighed on that Tuesday morning, um, I, I, I would eat that, you know, only one, one or two slices versus having three slices. Or, you know, I wouldn't have uh, three or four beers. Maybe I only have one beer. Uh, but you guys get the idea. Being Knowing that you have to have that meeting and you have to uh, show your numbers, uh, you know, the scale is the uh, is the true dredge there. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't uh, going the opposite direction. So here's some uh, some tips that they give you here, some success success tips 
Uh, reviewing your weekly score with a buddy or a small peer group. I talked about that already. Um, making sure that you commit to pro uh, pro progress every week. So you want to set that in there. Uh, remember that a weekly score of less than 85% isn't necessarily bad. Uh, and I mentioned that before. If you can do 80-85% of it, uh, maybe you're not 100% on your goal, but if you can do 80-85% of it, uh, you're going to be able to reach those 12-week those goals in the end. Uh, and don't be afraid to confront uh, what your numbers are uh, telling you. So, you know, if you're just not hitting your numbers because you had a bad week, then just deal with it and just make next week better. And uh, moving forward, that's what you need to do on any of your goals that you set up. So, um, so there you have it. So I'm open to any questions at this point, if anyone has any questions. And, Andrew, I don't know if you're on the line or not. Um, I, I am on the line. Questions. Well, hello. Thank you, Andrea. Um, <laughs> So we have a lot of see, okay, comments. So if you want to read some, as long as they're not bad comments, because I need all positive. They're stuff all today. great. You have wowed and amazed the members on the webinar today. Oh well, great. Well, you want to read a couple while I'm well, having people write down this email address? Well, that's it. Um, Armadeep says, "Wow, uh, Gita, great transformation," and Mike says he's in. All right, awesome, awesome. Well, I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to um, uh, shoot us an email. And actually, I'm going to give you um, uh, Trisha's email address, which is tlaux at mrgteam.com. And uh, by emailing Trish, uh, she will actually send you a link. I'm going to put all of this information in Dropbox. And actually, I didn't even show you all the stuff that was on here, but this is the, the email that you're going to want right here to uh, send it out to. And let me just show you something real quick uh, before we get... Um, this is the information that you're going to get. So you're going to get uh, week one, two, and three. I'm also going to give you all the PowerPoint slides from today's uh, call so you have all that. And then this is the one-hour business plan that, you know, a lot of you have seen this in the past. This is what Craig did, and this is what I filled out years ago. And, um, you know, he goes over a lot of these different things, how to set up your goal and how to really break it down on a real estate level from listings to buying, uh, from buyer sites to team building, uh, building up your past client retention. I mean, he goes over a lot of great stuff on here, and I'm not going to go through every slide on there, but as you can see, like, here's a great slide that I remember doing, like, how many days I want to work a week, how many hours I'm going to put in, and really breaking it down to what your goal is and what you want to do on the listing side and on the buyer side. And this is another great way to uh, get your goals on paper. Look, I mean, Craig's had this for years now where, you know, you're getting your marketing, your team building, your technology, putting all these goals together, plus uh, past client retention. Uh, and it goes on and on. But remember I told you about the financial rating, uh, you know, having that mental and uh, psychological rating of yourself and social rating and physical rating and family rating and spirit. I mean, it's it's been around for 100 years, but it's just the way um, you really dissect it. But uh, when I talk to coaching members and I talk to a lot of agents that are out there, it's it amazes me uh, how many people don't do this. They don't take the time to, you know, I remember when I got this from Craig, I locked myself up in the local library. Uh, for like two days and filled every one of these sheets out and started from there. And I look back at some of those sheets uh, that I did back in say like 2000, 2001, 2002. And back then I thought the goals that I had, like one, I'll give you an example. I was reading to my brother the other day. Uh, I had wrote down to make $150,000 in GCI. $150,000. I said, wow, that's such a stretch goal for me to do that. It was back in 2001. And now I look back to that, I'm like, wow, you know, our team is doing that, you know, double that in a month. And um, never would it imagine hitting a billion dollars in real estate sales and, and doing that. But when you, when you have this vision and you write it out and you put an action plan in place, um, you're going to achieve those goals. So hopefully everyone takes advantage of that one-hour business plan that Craig uh, has for us, and I'll go ahead and send it out. Uh, but just to give you a quick flavor of this, here's the one-week uh, point on here, and this is what I was talking about before. Um, I'm going to give you this, and again, you can get this from Brian Moran directly, I'm sure, by going onto their website, but that's the vision and plan, helping you create that, you know, what your vision is, and breaking it down into the 12-week goals and what those top three goals are going to be, and uh, just dissecting a little bit of what I showed you on the paper. But it gives you some examples, too, and I thought this was important for you to see. This just showed, uh, let's go to the wait one. I think that's probably more realistic for some people instead of talking about the uh, auto insurance here. Uh, but this was a, um, a weight goal, you know, the first week getting a, a, a physical, right, and getting a clearance to go work out, um, doing cardio exercising, walking, jogging, getting uh, exercise four days a week, and then it's, 
talks about journaling and you know not eating after eight o'clock and all these different things that you know we all know we need to do but have you put it in a format like this and looked at it every day uh, this is what's going to drive you to get your goals all right so all of that you will get um, by just uh, reaching out and let me just put that back here on the screen so you guys have it um, just email Tricia she'll be more than happy to send it out to you at tlaux at mrgteam.com and uh, she'll give you the link directly so you can download all of those attachments all right and last but not least I uh, wanted to let you know our next goal call will take place on Thursday November 5th at 4 o'clock Eastern time and what we're going to discuss and actually I was going to do that this week because uh, probably would give you a little bit more ramp up time for this event um, but I had promised everyone there was a lot of uh, feedback from people that they wanted to start getting into their goal planning and start looking already for driving a, having a very successful and, and strong finish here in 2015 because a strong finish here will lead to a very um, a strong start in 2016 but uh, if you're on this webinar November 5th I'm going to give you everything that you need to do uh, to hold your own annual Thanksgiving pie giveaway event and this is something that uh, again I teach a lot of Craig's uh, proctors um, you know direct response system that he does and you know websites and postcards and all the different things but uh, one of the things that Craig has wanted me to do over the years is share a lot of the things that we do to build our repeat and referral business things that we've done on the insurance side and, and implemented over on the real estate side and had a lot of success with and uh, next week I'm gonna have my good friend Dawn McCurdy come on uh, share some stuff with, that she does for advertising this and promoting this uh, also one of our coaching members Rosemary Nelson uh, has done a great job with this. She did, actually did her first pie event last year. And she had it. The long and short of it, uh, I want to say that she's already had six or seven sales directly from that event. And her average sales price, I think, I, I want to say, is about six to seven hundred thousand uh, dollars. So it's, I mean, it, it definitely paid for itself. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to do, how inexpensive it is to do, and what a great way to deepen relationships with the clients in your database by holding your own Thanksgiving pie giveaway event next week or uh, on, on November 5th so you'll still have a few weeks before that Tuesday before Thanksgiving to have this event so we're going to be having again uh, make sure you register you'll be getting some emails on that you're also going to be getting some emails on um, the big launch that I'm going to be having for my book so I really appreciate your support with that um, and being able to support me on getting that to be uh, Amazon's bestseller uh, on December 3rd uh, 2015 all right so uh, Andrew any questions or are we uh, are we good um, I have here from Graham can you post the email addresses again for Trish okay well it is up on the screen right now T Laux at MRG team dot com T Laux at MRG team dot com okay, anyone else that was it all right, great. Well, thank you so much, and um, thank you very much for taking the time to be on this call today. I hope I, I delivered some great, great value for you to start looking at your vision. And uh, I'm just going to throw this, and uh, a lot of people don't take me up on this, and I don't understand why, but you know, feel free to email me if you want to put together this 12-week vision and put together your vision and what you're going to do over the next 12 weeks and set some goals. Uh, send me an email. Send them to me. And let me take a look at them. I'd be more than happy to, you know, give you an email back and critique it a little bit for you and actually check in with you at the end of 12 weeks to see how you did or maybe in between uh, to see how you did and, and really keep you uh, as accountable to yourself as possible. So I'm throwing it out there, and you can send that email or you could send that form if you want to Trish as well, and she'll make sure I get it. Uh, or you can go to wmiranda at mrgteam.com, and it'll come directly to me. Um, but I challenge every one of you to, you know, spend it. 10 or 15 dollars it is on Amazon to buy that book and and uh, actually work through the process and if you don't want to buy the book then definitely email Trish and she'll send you the link and you can work through the worksheets uh, and get a lot of value from that so with that Andrea thank you very much I want to also thank Trish for doing an excellent job on getting these slides together for today's presentation and I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone on next week's or I'm sorry November 5th call uh, to go over our annual Thanksgiving pie event that's been a huge success for a lot of our members. Uh, so with that, thank you very much, and have a great night. Take care now.